Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity and today we have a mini tutorial on the super easy way how to add pockets to your skirts or to your pants and you can use this method for both for knit fabrics and for woven fabrics as well. You've seen me use this method in a variety of different tutorials for this linen skirt, for the really easy culotte shorts and of course for these basic pants with gathered waist as well. So that's exactly what we're doing today. We're gonna draft the pocket, we're gonna assemble the pocket and you will see it's really easy as one, two, three. You can totally do it, so let's get started. First, you will need to go and grab the pattern to which you want to add your pocket. It can be a skirt, it can be pants, whatever you would like. Now, in my case, I will be adding pockets to pants, similar to the ones that we did in a previous tutorial, basic pants with gathered waist. Now, they will be made in the same fabric. However, I'm not going to be making myself a second pair of pants that is identical to these. And if you want to follow the tutorial on drafting, the link will be in the info box below. But I will be making a pair of pants for my daughter so everything is going to be exactly the same way as I did for my pants right over here. Now you've got your pattern, that's great. You will also need a little extra piece of paper or pattern paper, whatever you have available. You will need some scissors, a pencil, or you might need to use some marker if you want to, and of course a ruler as well. This is the pocket that we're going for. This is how it looks from the right side, and this is how it looks from the wrong side. And to get started with that, we need to draft a box. This box is the representation of how big you want your pocket to be. The easiest way to go about it is to take your hand, place it on a piece of paper, add an inch on top, add an inch to the sides and inch to the bottom and draft a little box or rectangle. Obviously I'm making pants for my daughter, she's a toddler, therefore my box is a lot smaller than my actual hand but this will be perfect for her. Here you will see these are pants for my size and this is is how my hand looks if I place it on top of the pocket bag. Now this is the pattern piece for the front of the pants for my daughter. Here you see the crotch line which is the center front. Here you see the side seam. Now what we need to do is we need to take this little rectangle and place it on top of your front pattern piece and we try to align it somewhat with the top and with the side seam. Of course it is not going to match perfectly because most likely the top of your pants and the side seam of your pants is not going to be straight. They might but in the majority of the cases they won't. So what we need to do right now is we need to adjust so that way the side seam of our pocket is going to match the side seam of the front pattern piece. For me, this is just a small adjustment right over here. For you, that might be a little bit bigger. Of course, it will all depend on the style of the pants or the skirt that you're going to attach this pocket to. Now we need to determine how wide and how big we want the opening to the pocket to be. Now here, for example, in this case for my pants, I did, let's take a look right over here, about two inches and about five and a half inches deep. For my daughter, let's go ahead and do two inches as well. And since the pocket itself is five inches deep, let's go ahead and do three inch opening. So here we have two inches on this side, three inches on this side. What we need to do right now is build a little box again. There we go. And now we need to curve in this area right over here. There we go. Now, if you'd like, you can leave a right angle right over here of your pocket. However, I don't. I'd rather have it curved and it's easier to sew it that way as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to curve in this side as well. There we go, you can see it right over here. Now what we need to do is we need to place this draft underneath the front pattern piece and we need to copy this curve right over here. There we go, and just like that, we have all of the pattern pieces that we need. We adjusted the front pattern piece to fit the pocket, so what we're going to do right now is I'm going to outline this in red, and then I'm going to cut it off. 
Now, over here, we will need to take an extra piece of paper and what we want to copy is this part right over here. So, we don't want to copy this part, we just want to copy this part right over here. So there we go. And now we need to take care of this part as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this part right over here because we don't need it anymore. And I'm going to outline this part right over here. And that's how we're going to cut this piece. So now let's take a look how it all comes together. First we have this piece, then we have the pocket bag that goes like this, and then we have the front pattern piece for the pants that goes like this. There we go. And when you put your hand inside, you will have a pocket. For each pocket, you're going to cut one of these and of course your front pattern piece for the pants as well. Now here I have cut my pattern pieces. As you can see, I draft without seam allowances, therefore everywhere you will see quarter of an inch seam allowances added as I'm going to be assembling this on a serger and on a cover stitch machine. If you're using some other techniques, you can add 3 eighths of an inch, 5 eighths of an inch, or whatever seam allowance is best for you. So let's go ahead and unpin the pattern from our fabric. The major steps for both woven and knit fabrics are going to be exactly the same. If there are any differences, I will point them out in the process. So first thing that I like to do is I take this pattern piece for the pocket and I place it like so where the curve of the front pattern piece lines up with it perfectly. And that's where we're going to sew first, this curve right over here. Now here I'm using a serger, but for woven fabrics you can use just a straight stitch on the regular sewing machine. Now I'm going to go ahead and give it a really good press from this side first. Please make sure that you check the settings on your iron before you give it a good press depending on the content of the fibers in your fabric. If you're working with woven fabrics, so fabrics that don't stretch, you have two options. Number one, what you can do is with seam allowance brushed towards the actual pocket bag, you're going to understitch. So you're going to press the seam allowance towards the pocket bag like so and you're going to understitch very 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 close to the edge of the pocket bag all the way along the side where we just sewn so right over here just like you see on the culotte shorts in this example another option is to press your pocket bag like so and then do a stitch a top stitch catching both the pocket layer and the layer of your pants so you can do that as well and that is exactly what we're going to do right now for this knit fabric what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my pocket bag like so and I'm going to give it another really good press Pressing as you go definitely makes your project look so much better. So now you can either use a zigzag stitch right over here, a three-step zigzag, a lightning stitch, a straight stretch stitch. In some cases with knits you can even use a regular straight stitch but make sure that you widen it a little bit so that way the stitches don't pop. In my case I'm going to be using a cover stitch machine just because I did load it with two different colors of threads and I think it adds a really nice pop of color. So that's what I'm going to do right over here. There we go, take a look. So you see pink, you see yellow, and this is how it looks on the other side. There we go. But as I said, you don't have to use cover stitch machine. You can use just any of the stitches that I mentioned before. It will do just great on knit fabrics. Of course you can also use twin needle as well if you have that option on your sewing machine and if you're doing any other stitch you don't have to do two rows of stitches over here. I just did that because I love the combination of colors, it looks fun and I like the decorative element that it adds but one row of stitches of any other stretch stitches will do just great. For this next step what we need to do is we need to flip it over like so and then we take this pattern piece and we place it down like so, so that way it lines up on the bottom and on the sides and there we go, we flip it out like this. Now we need to pin from here all the way till here and that's how we're going to sew it together. 
When you're done, give your pocket bag another really good press and that's it, your pocket is assembled. Let's go ahead and take a look. This is how it looks from the right side. This is the entrance to the pocket. And this is how it looks from the wrong side. Here you have your pocket bag, the insides of the pocket. There we go. The last thing that I like to do before I assemble the rest of the pants is either baste it by hand right over here. So that way the top of the pocket is securely attached to the top of the pants and it doesn't shift or move as I'm sewing the pants. And I like to do the same right over here as well. If you don't like hand basting or basting, what you can do is you can just use regular pins and you can place one right over here so that way there is a sandwich and one right over here so that way there is a sandwich on the side seam as well. Just don't forget to remove them as you place other pattern pieces together so that way you don't forget that you have the pins right over here. And that's it. That's how you make this super easy and straightforward pocket like so.